And my mother was a very great artist in embroidery. Did absolutely fabulous work. And uh, she could do everything with thread. Sewing, knitting, embroidery, make tapestries, repair tapestries. Oh, just fabulous work. So I, I've grown up in a background where thread is of enormous importance. She made her living this way for a while. So I was always amazed at the way, a, say, you take a ball of wool and with knitting needles and suddenly it turns into a sweater. Fantastic. But I found out, you see, the secret of this, which is that it will do this, it will hold together by this combination of warp and woof. By this process where one thread goes under the other, omits the next, goes under the other, and then the next thing does the same thing but in the opposite way. Connect that. And they hold each other up. For example, you can put two sticks of wood and lean them against each other and they'll stand up. You know, the Chinese character for man looks more or less like that. And although this is, a, this is simply the brush form, the brush abbreviation of what were originally the legs of a uh, little human stick figure, there's a story that Japanese children uh, sometimes learn from their mothers that this, the reason this is the character for man is that two sticks <coughs> lent together, as I described, will keep each other up and the one depends on the other. It's mutual. And so in the same way, the existence of human beings depends on our supporting each other. Without that, no one of us can exist. But that, which may seem a little trite, a little sort of moralistic and so on, but it is absolutely fundamental that anything that there is, whenever we can say that something exists, existence is a function of relationship. Motion itself is a function of relationship. For example, uh, forgive me if some of you have heard this one before, but it's a very important, basic lesson. If there is only one object, one small ball in the middle of endless space, nobody knows whether it's moving. Because you can't tell whether it's approaching anything or whether it's going away from anything, because there's nothing else. So, in that state of affairs, no motion exists. But if we introduce a second ball into the picture and the two either come towards each other or go away from each other, then we can say that both of them or either of them is in motion. We can't decide which is the one that's doing the moving. Because they, uh, it could be, could be one, could be the other. Now we'll put three balls into space. And we find two of them staying together and the other one going away. Now it's up to the two of them to decide whether the other one is going away from them or they are going away from the other because two is a majority in this case. And the vote always, of course, goes to the majority, the universe being basically a democratic organization. <laughs> And so it goes. Now, once you've got that, you can see that motion is a form of relationship. Or I, let me put it in another way. Energy is a form of relationship. If the universe is basically a play of energy, then you can say energy and relationship go together. Now, what is this saying? This is saying that being, existence itself, is relationship. <laughs>